All right, a little bit of a slow start today, but it is Advent of Code 2021, day number eight. If you don't know what this is all about, check the description for all the info. We're just going to get right into it. Let's go. Seven segment search. You barely reach the safety of the cave when the whale smashes into the cave mouth, collapsing it. No going back. Sensors indicate another exit is at a much greater depth, so you have no choice but to press on. Your submarine slowly makes its way through the cave system. You notice that the four-digit, seven-segment displays, right, these things in your submarine are malfunctioning. <clears throat> they must have been damaged during the escape. You'll be in a lot of trouble without them, so you better figure out what's wrong. Each digit of a seven-segment display is rendered by turning on or off any of seven segments, A through G. A, B, C, E, F, G. And then this is D in the middle, right? So uh, I guess a one is a C, F. Oh, they give you the, this is the whole chart. <laughs> a nine is A, B, C, D, F, G, right? So an a, a nine doesn't have E, an eight obviously has everything. A seven is missing, right? Okay. Okay, the problem is that the signals which control oh, the rest will be off. Yep, okay, we got it. So the seven segments, which of the seven segments are on or off, and then you translate the, that. The, it's basically seven bits, right? So there's the A bit, the B bit, the C bit, the D bit, the E bit, the F bit, and the G bit. And then you can translate those seven bits into nine possible combinations of bits that are valid. All other combinations be invalid. And then you could translate that into a digit one through nine. All right, so to render a one, yeah, okay. The signals which control the segments have been mixed up in each display. The submarine is still trying to display numbers by producing output on signal wires A through G, but those wires are connected to segments randomly. Okay, so if they're connected to segments randomly, so you know, for example, even so, that like if you see a CF, or if you see any signal come in that only has two bits, say A, G, right? You know that has to be a one because there isn't any other number that only has two, um, right? And you also know that, you know, if you see an AG come in just by itself, you know it has to be a one. And you also know that either C is connected to A or C is connected to G, right? They're randomly connected, but you know that C has to be one of these two and F has to be one of these two, right? And then you can, you can basically use a set of rules like that, you know, to piece together. So the only one that has three coming in, right? So here, if you, right, the only one that has three coming in is seven. So if you see a signal come in with three bits on, you know that it's a seven, regardless of which bits they are. Um, and you also know that, you know, uh, what those three bits are must map to A, C, you know, F originally, right? So if it's, say, you know, B, if it's B, D, E, you know that A, C, F map in some combination to B, D, E, right? And then you can reverse it. So you can use that rule. You can use this rule. Is this the only one with four bits? Yes, so four is the only one with four bits. And it also includes C and F, um, as well as B and D. So between those three rules, right? You're getting, the, you're getting there. <clears throat> the eight rule, obviously, is gonna help you, right? If you see a signal come in with eight bits, um, I guess it would be indistinguishable. You would have no way of knowing. Uh, I mean, you would know that if you see eight bits come in, you know it's an eight. But it's always going to be, you don't have no, it won't help you figure out what the arrangement of the original signal is. Anyway, let's just keep going. Worse, the wire are mixed up separately for each display. So, you know, you have multiple different digits being displayed and each one has a different configuration, right? So you basically have to solve the problem for each one separately. Uh, if you've got, say, a five five digits total in your display panel, you have e each of the five di di uh, displays is randomly shaken up on its own. 
All right, all digits went to the display. Use the same connections, though. Huh? Hold on. The signal wires, hold on. The signals which control the segments have been mixed up on each display. Okay. Control the segments. The submarine is trying to display numbers by producing output on signal wires A through G. So you got eight eight wires, right? Well, seven wires. <laughs> um and those wires are connected up to segments randomly. The wire segment connections are mixed up separately for each display. All the digits within a display. So a display is a digit. Okay. So that's, that's what I was thinking. You might know that only signal wires B and G are turned on, but that doesn't mean segments B and G are turned on. The only digit that uses two... Oh, it's saying exactly what I said, is one. So it must mean C and F are meant to be on, right? You still can't tell which wire BG goes to which segment. You'll need to collect more information for each display. You watch the changing signals for a while. Make a note of all 10 patterns you see. Then write down a single four-digit output value. Your puzzle input using the signal patterns you should be able to work out which pattern corresponds to which digit for example here is you might you might see in a single entry in your notes two three four five six seven so this is an eight c d f b e right so you know that it's a five five one two three four five uh two three four it could be a two one two three four it could be a three it could be a five. So that's a two, three, or five, but we don't know which one. Okay. And so on. All right. Uh, each entry consists of unique signal patterns, a pipe delimiter, and finally, the four-digit output value. Oh, I see. So the pipe is there. So basically, this signal comes in, then this signal... Then this signal, then this signal, then this signal, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And then these four digits appear, right? C, D, F, E, B. So C, D, F, E, B would look like this. C, D, F, E, B. Uh, B. C, D, E, F. So it would look like an H, which is none of the digits, but it must be a 2, 3, or 5 in reality. Okay. Here it consists of 10 unique signal patterns, a pipe delimiter, and the four-digit output value, which is clearly an incorrect one. The same, within an entry, the same... Wire segment connections are used, but you don't know what the connections actually are. The unique signal patterns correspond to the 10 different ways the submarine tries to render a digit using the current wire segment connections. Because seven is the only digit that uses three segments. Dab is clearly a seven. Okay, so it was trying to render a seven here, but a seven is supposed to be ACF, not DAB, okay. Uh, all right. Signal lines DAB are on, because four is the only digit that uses four segments. EFB means that to render a four, Signals E, A, F, and B are on. Using this information, we will work out which combination of wires corresponds to each of the 10 digits. Then you can decode the four-digit output value. Unfortunately, in the above example, all the digits in the output value use five segments and are more difficult to deduce. Consider this larger example.
How's the digits? Okay, so this is just... I think what's confusing here is like, you know, this is just some sample data, I think, right? Like sending these signals in this order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Oh, I see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I see. Are there always going to be 10? Let's check the input. Yes. So it looks like, right. Okay, so this is, so this is giving you a sampling of here's all 10 digits, but scrambled, right? It's just a sampling, right? Now, this is what's lit up on the screen, right? Ah, so here you can see CJEB and GCBE, right? So whatever digit this is, is this one, um, right? FDG, ACBE, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Uh, and we know that, right? Okay, so... C E F B D G C E F B D G Yeah, here you go. So even though these aren't identical, um we can sort every string. <laughs> um we probably should sort every string just, you know, to get them in order so we can s match them up better because you can see that these are the same. So they're giving you all 10 digits scrambled and then they say, "Okay, well what are these?" right? You if you look at these and figure out, you know, which digit each and every one of these is, right? And then, right, well, these four, what are they, right? Okay. Be your on. Okay, use this information. You should work out which combination corresponds to each of the 10 digits. Then you can decode the four digit output value, right? And the output values, how many times do one, four, seven, or eight? appear. So this is actually really easy to do, this first part. But if we, o if we do the first part the easy way, if we do the first part the easy way, then, right, it, it would, you know, we don't even have to look at this to, to do this first part, right? We can do this, it, it'll be too easy. So the question is, should we take the strategy of doing the first part the easy way, just so we can see what part two is asking for? Or can we just solve the whole thing out of the gate, which is clearly just to, you know, decode every single one, right? Uh, so how would we go about decoding all of them? Well, I know a way to do it by hand, but the question is, how do you do it um, algorithmically? Right. So the the ones that are, you know, one, four, seven, and eight, that's where we have to start. So one, four, seven, and eight. Okay. So when we look at one, four, seven, and eight, no matter what letters they are, um, there is going to be let's let me open a notepad here. Just regular old notepad. Okay. Let's get some bigger text here. Okay, so uh, you're gonna be able to find one and four, right? So the first rule is that there will be, uh, there will be two ru the, uh, rules, rules, okay? 
two letters will be in common between one, four, seven, and eight, and those map to C and F. Okay, so that's our first. We don't know which one is C and which one's F, but we do know that, right? Because one is well. Let's let's actually start with easier rules, right? Um, one, uh, let's do it like this. Markdown. Uh, the one contains two letters. The four contains four letters. Well, let's do every. Let's do all of them. The zero, right? The zero contains six letters. The one, the two, one, two, three, four, five. The two contains five letters. Two. Uh, the two, three. We don't need the th thes. Two, two, three, contain five. Four contains four letters. We need to write letters every time. I'm just trying to make it easier to, to reference. Four equals four. Five is also five. Two, three, five. Four equals four. Six, six equals up oh, six and zero. Uh, seven equals three. Eight equals eight. Nine equals six. Okay, so zero, six, and nine. Okay, so we got those. We got these rules here. So two letters will be in common between one, four, and those are equal to C and F. So that's a rule. Uh, two letters. Oops. Let's do this. There we go. Two letters will. Oh, one letter will be in common between seven and eight that isn't C or F, right? That isn't in one or four, that letter is, that letter maps to A, right? Because you can see that se uh, one, four, seven, and eight, right, are four. So the A is in seven and eight. It's not in one and four. So you're going to find a letter in common between seven and eight that is not present it's, you know, it's not C or F. We already know which two are C or F. That one is A, no matter what. Okay. Okay. So likewise, we can do B. We can do B the same way. Well, B D, right? Um, <clears throat> two letters will be in common between four and eight that aren't in one or seven. Those two are B and D. Okay, B and D, B and D, right? They're not in one and seven. Actually, we can get a simpler rule for for the A, right? Uh, one letter will be in seven that isn't in one. That letter is A. Simpler rule, simpler rule, right? Simpler rule. Um. Two letters will be in four that aren't in seven. Four that aren't in seven. Those two are B and D. Cool. Um, two letters will be in eight that aren't in one. Uh, four or seven. We don't need to worry about one. We just need to worry about four and seven because C and F are already covered, right? That aren't uh, A, B, C, D, F. And those are E and G. We still don't know which ones are which though. Okay. So this gives us, so now at this point, we should know 
uh, we know C and F, but we don't know which way around. We know A. We know B and D, but we don't know which way around. And we know E and G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we know we just have to figure out, we have to disseminate C and F, B and D, and E and G with, with I guess, three more rules, right? So how can we tell apart C and F, right? Well, we're going to need to make use of CF, blank, blank, C. Okay, so um, there's go we're going to have to use the six, all right? So if we look, zero, six, and nine, zero, six, and nine, right? So we know which two might be C and F, right? So we can say, okay, well, you know which two letters might be C and F. Well, there's going to be three, right, numbers that all have six letters lit up. We know that those three numbers are 0, 6, and 9. And we can see that the two letters representing C that are wired up to C and F, we know which two those are. However, when we look at 0, 6, and 9, right, well... We don't. We won't know. We're gonna have three patterns that all contain six letters in them, and we don't know which of those three patterns is the zero, which one's the six, and which one's the nine. However, we know two letters that are mapped to, mapped to C and F, and we can look at those two letters and we can say, okay, of the three patterns that contain six letters, right? Uh, Two of them are going to contain whatever letters are mapping to C and F, and one of the patterns will only have half. It'll have one of the letters from C and F, and it'll be missing the other letter, right? So whichever letter is missing, right, whichever letter is missing is the from the six is going to be C, but also... Whichever of those three patterns, right, zero, six, and nine, only has one, you know, the 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 F, well, right, is gonna be the pattern for six. And if we know the pattern for six, right, so let's first write this down. Okay, of the three patterns containing six letters, one of them will oh. Two will contain the letters mapping to C and F, but one will only contain one of those letters. Um, that, that pattern is six. Also, the missing letter is C. The present letter... Well, the present uh, it uh, maps to C. The present letter maps to F. Okay, so now we've got our C and our F. Also, now that we have the six, we know that this is six. We have a six-digit pattern that maps to six. Will that help us sort out the B and D? Well, we can eliminate the C and the F. Well, we know which two letters map to B and D because they're the ones that are in the four and not in the seven. And we know that this is a six, so it's gonna have those two letters in it, but yeah, I don't think it helps us differentiate which one's the B and which one's the D. It doesn't, doesn't help us do that. All right, so let's look for another way to distinguish B and D. Well, the zero, right? We can, ju we can just look at the zero here. Uh, we can do the same trick again. So of the zero, six, and nine, Right, only the zero will be missing D. So of the three patterns, it uh, let's just copy this whole thing. Of the three patterns containing the six letters, two will contain mappings to B and D but one will only contain one of those letters. That pattern is zero, right? The missing letter maps to D. 
the present letter maps to B. All right, so we figured out C and F, we figured out B and D. How do we figure out E and G? Same deal, right? The nine, right? The, the zero, right? We know which two letters are E and G because it's the, the ones that are in eight but aren't in A, B, C, D, F. And we can see that E and G are in, uh, they're in the zero, they're in the six, but only one of them is in the nine. And that will help us determine, right? Of the three patterns, the two will contain the letters mapping to E, to G, and E. But only one will contain the pattern is nine. Also, the missing letter maps to E. The present letter maps to G. Okay. And now, once we know the mapping, right, we can make, right, once we know, once we know, this, I mean, there's almost definitely, um, probably a superior way of doing this that, it, you know, but this is, this is the way that I'm seeing, so I'm going to just go with it. So once we know the mapping, make a dictionary, right, we're going to make a dictionary like this, A goes to B. Right, for example, right, which letter, right, maps to which letter. And then we can construct, right, we can basically, if this is the correct digit and this is the incorrect digit, so correct, given, incorrect, right? Then we can take our correct mappings. So in the case of A, it's A, C, D, E, G. I mean, case of two, A, C, D, E, G. We look up in this little dictionary five times, figure out what A maps to, what C maps to, what D maps to, what E maps to, what G maps to. And then that's going to give us the string for two, right? And that will give, so we've already got one, four, seven, eight. We got zero, one, four, six, seven, uh, seven, eight, nine. We just need two, three, five. Make a dictionary to figure out two, three, five. Uh, is there a better way to figure out two, three, five? Uh, there is. There is a better way to figure out two, three, five. Um, of the three remaining digits, Two is the one that contains E, whatever maps to E, right? Two is the only one with an E. Therefore, right, five is the only one with a B. Of the three remaining digits, five is the only only one that contains whatever maps to B, and to get three, let's see, B, F, C, E, C, F. So we can use B to find five. We can use E to find two. I guess we can just say, hey, three contains C and F, or it contains, because we already know every, right? Oh, three is the three is the is the one we don't know yet. We already know everything else. Three is the last one, whatever it is. We, I mean, we could do a check for three and say, okay, it has C and F, or it has B and E missing, right? Um, but it's just what it's just the last one, right? The dic we could say, oh, the, the length of the dictionary is missing. We, there's one digit we don't know yet. The last one must be the three, right? All right, so we're going to basically we're going to code these rules in this order, right? And what we want to return is we want to return something like this. 1 is going to be, for example, right? Uh, well, 1 always contains two things. So 1 is going to be like, you know, a uh AC, right? 
pretending like C got switched with A and F got, you know, something like this. Um, so to how many times do one, four, seven, or eight appear, right? Well, we're looking at um, these parts here, right? So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna for each, you know, we're we're gonna go through, we're gonna run these rules, right? So we're gonna come through our input, we're gonna take this, and we're gonna run it through the rules. We're gonna get this here, and it's gonna tell us, you know, two is whatever, right? I'm just I'm just typing in whatever, right? Two is something, three is something, four is you know something, and so on. So we're gonna get all all nine, all ten digits here, like this. Um, actually, we want to do it the other way around. We want to do something like this. One. This one's one. This one's two. And so on. So this is what we want to return after we run through the rules. So we run through these, these ten rules. We return. We get something like this. And then for each one of these... We want to sort it and look it up in this dictionary and get the digit, right? Uh, and then we can return a four-digit number. Um, but actually, the question is, how many times do digits one, four, seven, or eight appear, right? So then we can take, you know, that list of digits. Right. We shouldn't return a digit like you know a single. We shouldn't return something like this, right? From the next function, we shouldn't be like, oh, it's four three two three. No, we should return four three four two like this, and then we can, you know, count. We can basically make a list of lists, right? We can convert this to one of these, and then, you know, for each input line, we create something like this, and then for the next input line, we create another one. And then we iterate across all of these, and we count the ones, fours, sevens, and eights to get our answer. Okay. So we made a plan, and now we have to code the plan. Uh, and we took 30 minutes planning. But hey, uh, I think it's going to pay off. I don't know if this is the best um, solution. There's probably something much smarter and fancier like there always is. But this is my plan. Um, I'm sticking to it, and I know it's going to work, right? Which is why I'm I'm sticking to it. Okay, so let's take our test input, which is just this. Let's actually make two test inputs. So, um, oh, 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 eight file. Let's actually. Test input one. So that's test input one. It's going to be one line. Um, and this is test input two. Right? Because the actual input, everything's a one liner. Okay. Uh, new file, test input two. Okay. We need to fix all these things here. Fantastic. All right. Um, got that. Okay. Uh, and now we got a real input. Very nice. Okay, we got all the inputs set. Got our template. What was the name of this? Seven se seven segment. Uh, seven segment one. Okay, fantastic. So we'll start with test input one. And we'll start with our parsing, like we always do. 
and we'll keep our we'll keep I'm gonna keep these notes here off to the to the side, um, and maybe I'll bring them into the picture, you know, when I start coding that part. But let's start with the parsing. So let's actually look at the test input again. So we're gonna parse this out. We're gonna want to make a list, right? Because let's look at test input two will be more useful. So for each line, we want to split on the pipe, and we want to strip uh, both sides, right? And then each side we want to split. So we want to get the, the sample data and the display separately. Uh, and then we want to break each one into a list of strings, right? So a list of 10 strings and a list of four strings. And then we want to, so we want to have a list of tuples and each tuple contains two lists. So uh, parsed input. Okay, so for line, in, all right, so for all the lines, uh, we're going to say that the, um, the sample, uh, the raw sample equals, oh, the raw sample comma, the display, the raw display is equal to, um, text.strip, or text in line dot split on pipe. So we're going to split the line on the pipe. That should give us two items, right? And we can actually tuple this, tuple, right? I think that's going to work. Um, oops. Go away. Uh, so our, oh, we, we forgot an important part here. Um, there we go. That's what we want. Okay. Boop. Uh, raw sample. Yep. And then raw display. Perfect. Okay. And now we want to do um, uh, parsed input dot append. Get get down there. Um, we want to do the raw sample dot split. Let's just test that raw sample dot split. comma raw display dot split. Okay, so then we're gonna have a tuple. This is the first half of the tuple, raw display dot split. And there's the second half, cool. Parse input done. Let's just verify that down here by printing the parsed input. And let's do it with test input two, just so we can see, make sure it works across multiple lines. Looks good. Okay. So now let's go back to our logic here. Uh, and our first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we want to get the thing that's going to decode, right? So we'll decode the sample, sample. Right. This is the meat of the of the logic. Right. Um, so uh, two letters will be in common between one. Oh, first, we got we we can just decode the one. Right. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, decoded digits like this. Fantastic. Okay. So. Uh, so first, let's decode the um, I think, do we want to have the reverse of the dictionary? 
we sort of had to have a two-way dictionary, right? Because sometimes we want to refer to the dictionary by value and sometimes by key. Let us, I think what we can do is we can start with it in one mode and then flip it at the end before we return it. All right, had to take a little break. Where was I? Right, we're going to decode the digits. And I said I was going to have to reverse the dictionary at the end. So like I said, we're going to start with something like this, right? We're going to aim to be like, you know, one is, a, you know, whatever. And then at the end, we'll flip it. Because that we're going to want for the next part of the problem, right? We're going to want the opposite. We're going to flip it like that at the very end, okay? So we're going to start by trying to figure this out. So first rule, uh, let's see. Maybe we should make each of these rules into a, into a thing. We can make a class, actually. Let's make a class. Class uh, decoder, right? And we're going to pass in both the um, the sample and the display. Okay. And you know what? As soon as you initiate this, we're going to immediately be like, okay, right? Self uh, dot map equals self, you know, decode, right? Because you would never want to make a decoder. You just want to, you know, why bother, right? We can just loop and create decoders. Um, there's no reason for us to, you would always want to decode as soon as you pass the input to a decoder, right? Because once it's decoded and you have that dictionary built, now the decoder object can do all, you know, any functions, answer any questions that we might have for it. But the decoding is just always going to happen right away, so... We'll do decode right away. And the first thing we'll do is, so here's the, uh, so the self.digit map is going to start out empty, but decode is going to fill it up. Um, and, oh, right, the map is going to end up starting, <laughs> right? So, going to, the digit map. Cool. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, one for mm, let's find the one, four, seven, and eight first. Okay. So we'll call that de uh, find one, four, seven, eight. So this is going to return part of the map that we want. Um, so actually, we can do this. De find the one, right? Well, it'll just make you know this probably isn't the most efficient way, but this is gonna be a very readable way to do this, uh, and I like readable. So the one is the only one that contains two letters. So uh, for, right, x, well, for, um, uh, I guess we'll call it a digit in the sample. Actually, we can just do this. Uh, digit in sample if the length of the digit is 2. So we can return... Can return that. I think. <laughs> um, let's go down here and be like, hey, for sample display in parsed input, uh, we want to say decoders. All right, we're going to make a whole bunch of decoders. <laughs> Mm 
right? You can make a whole list of them like that. So now that'll get us up here. There's no other breakpoints. Good. Okay. Fantastic. Go to our console. Something's happening. Mine 15. Apparently, oh. There we go. That's what's wrong. Uh, why didn't you hit the breakpoint? Oh, this is why. Digit map. One equals find one. There we go. Oh. Self find one. Hey, now we're looking good. Too many blank lines here. Look, I'm getting better at the problem window. Line too long. Debug console. Yep, so B. There we go. Is zero. Great. Digit map two. Oh no, it's not two, it's gonna be four. Four self dot find four. So the four is going to be the only one that has uh, four in it. The seven is the only one that has three. And the eight. We could really, it would be very easy to shrink this code. Um, right, because we could just, you know, do two, four, three, eight, all in once. But I, I like splitting it out like this, uh, just because. All right, so we got the one, four, seven, eight. Those rules are done. What's our next rule? Let's bring out the notepad again. Uh, one letter will be in seven that isn't in one. That letter is A. So we need a letter mapping also. Um, so maybe we got this digit map, but we need a letter map while we're decoding here. So we need a, a letter mapping. Right. Um, so one letter. Okay, so we did one, four, seven, eight. Two letters will be in common between one, four, seven, and eight. And those map to C and F. All right, so let's do that. There's going to be two. Is there an easier way to do this? So one, four, seven, eight. C and F is in common between all of them. One letter is in seven that isn't in one. That's A. Uh, one letter is in four that isn't in seven. Oh, two letters are in four that aren't in seven. That's B and D. So actually, we can get C and F as a result of this. We can just say, hey, there's... there's um, 
Oh, we just know the two letters that are in one are C and A. We don't need to say in common. We just need to know that the two letters that are in one are C and F. <laughs> um, the two letters that are in one. In one map to C and F. Okay. Uh, how are we going to narrow that down? I guess we can worry about that um, later, right? Let's worry about the ones that we can find for real. Uh, so one letter is in seven that isn't in one. That letter is A. So you can say that letter map A... Uh, well, we'll do it the other way around, actually. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter for right now. Letter, map, A. So there's going to be a letter that is in 7 that isn't in 1. So I think there's a way to do this using sets, right? We can find... The opposite of the intersection, right? Python uh, intersection of two sets. And then we want to find, right? So what are the related? I want to find related things to this. What's it called when you have the, the not intersection? Um, Python set not intersection, opposite of intersection. Symmetric difference. All elements that appear only in set A or in set B, but not both. Is there just difference? Oh, we don't, right? Is there just difference? There is just difference. Return a new set with elements in the set that are not in the others. Right? Oh, we can just do minus? Let's try it. Okay, so let's say we have a set A, B, minus uh, A. That should be B. Oh, it is. So we can do this with sets. So actually what we want to do... Let's turn all these lists into sets. Can you do a set comprehension in, right? Sure enough. Sure enough you can, perfect. And now we can do set math. Fantastic. So that's going to be way easier. So uh, we can say letter map A is going to be equal to um, digit map, right, which is a set again, right? Be in 7, that's not in 1. So digit map 7 minus digit map 1. And now we know that A is... Whatever that digit is, let's do this. Okay. We'll use that one for our. We'll use that one for debugging from now on, right? We can leave this one. That way we won't mess up this one. <laughs> okay. Set object is not subscriptable. Oh, oh, but we don't we don't need it to be. Let's check the debug console here. Where are we? 
Oh, we left all these breakpoints in. All these functions are one-liners. We could probably put them down in here. You know what? I, I said I wasn't going to make it easier before, but I am now. Um, so we'll make the, the rule is the uh, the finder the finder is going to be to find the one you need the two to find the four you need four to find the seven you need three and to find the eight you need eight so there's our finder and then we'll say for uh, digit count in finder to items, digit map digit is equal to oops, equal to count. And now we can get rid of all these guys. Um, okay. Expected a colon somewhere. 22. Yep. Okay. We're in. Uh, sample display. Cool. Uh, why are we here again? Oh, because there's a breakpoint here. What's going on? It's the only breakpoint we got. Why are you stopping here? I want to go. I want to be in here. I don't want to be out here. Uh oh, because breakpoint has nothing. This is a problem with the. Breakpoint, it's an annoying thing in Python. If you have no if you have nothing after the breakpoint, then you're actually stop, right? So if you put it at the end of a function, the function will return before the breakpoint happens. Uh Python issue that they still haven't fixed. I'm sure there's some thing somewhere about it. Yep. See, now we're here, right? So you know that A is EDB. That can't be right. Um, digit map seven is EDB. Digit map one is BE. Oh, they're not. It's not split up. Is the problem? Okay. Well, we can fix that easily. So it's not digit for digit. It's going to be a digit. Uh, no. So that doesn't actually split it. How do you split on like every character? I've never had to do that. Uh, Python split every character. Oh, just do a list comprehension just like that? Oh, you can just do list around it. That works.
OK. What? What are you what's going on here? So the digit map So for each digit in the sample, if the length is equal to the count, we want to return a set that works actually. This is going to be a set that contains a set. Um, what I'm going to do is there's a two liner here. Let's just do it the 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 written out way. Length of the digit equals the count. Then the digit map digit is equal to oh for digit count in finder dot items. I see we've overwritten the digit. This is the problem. We're using digit for two different unrelated things. For um. Right, so this is this actual number, right? So we'll do number uh, code. We'll call that the code, right? Because we're decoding. So for each code in the sample, if the length of the code is equal to the count, then the digit is equal to the set, right? Set the code like that. So then letter map A, Okay. Debug console. Letter map. A is D. We know that A is D. Terrific. Okay. So now we only got uh, six more to go. Okay. Well, two letters will be in four that aren't in seven. Those are B and D. Two letters. So A. Okay. So the uh, the those are E and G. One letter will be in seven that isn't in one. The letter is A. Two letters in one, those are C and F. So let's do this. Let's do let's uh, so, let's use our letter map. <clears throat> and put sets, right? And then sort of um, shrink them, right? So A is already only pointing to, to D. The set is just one item. But, you know, let's do like this. So uh, letter map uh, C is going to be equal to uh, its digit map 1. And the same thing for F. Right? So if we do this now, 
we can see we you know C and E F both have two candidates that are the same two candidates, and we'll sort them out later. Right. So we could do B and D the same way. So letter map B will be there will be two letters in four that aren't in seven. So digit map four minus digit map seven. Yep, so we got the two candidates here for there is gonna be sort of for B and D. So B and D are the same. Uh, and the ones that, are, that aren't in any of these are going to be letter map. going to be E and G. E, 8, that aren't in uh, anything else. So digit map eight is going to be, you know, A B C D E F G. Uh, one. Well, we don't need one because four and seven both contain what one has, so we only really need to subtract. Uh, we only need to subtract four, and seven. Yeah, seven and four. Seven and four, and that'll give us E and G. E and G. Oop. Oh, I put an equals instead of a plus sign. And now we have all our candidates. Up, oh, something's wrong actually. What is this? What's what's the error though? Eight key error eight. <laughs> oh, that's the issue. Nope. Unsupported operand type plus for set and set. Oh. Uh, Python combine two sets. Join two sets. Union. We need to do union and not plus. Okay. We can do that. Let's try that. Yep, we have all our candidates now. Terrific. Now let us sort out um, the final, the final ones. So, of the three patterns containing six letters, okay, uh, two will contain the letters mapping to C and F. Right. Uh, but one will only contain one of those letters. That pattern is six, and the missing letter maps to C. The other one maps to F. Okay. So we're going to do sort, sort C and F <laughs> somehow. So how do we sort C and F? Of the three patterns containing six letters. So we need to get the ones that can contain six letters. Um, and the ones that contain 
six letters are uh, zero, six, and nine. Okay. So let's get O six and nine first. Let's get O six nine. And to do that, what we can do is we can say, uh, we'll call it o, uh, 0, 6, 9 is equal to uh, code for code in sample if length of code is equal to 6. So there's our 0, 6, 9, self.sample. Okay, so now we have our 0, 6, 9 candidates. So of those, two of them will contain the letters mapping to C and F, but one will only contain one of those letters. So his C and his F, right? Um, it says EB in this case, EB. I just want to do some testing here. Okay. Um, with some sets. So let's pretend we have like a E, B, F. Right? And then we have our uh, E, our B, E. Y in X, false. Uh, because, yeah, because it's looking for the whole set, right? Um, so we see, is, are the items in a set completely within another set is the question we want to ask. Uh, here, is, test whether every element in the set is in other, is subset. Y dot is subset of X should be true. Yep. X is subset of Y is false. So we got zero, six, nine, right? Okay, and then we can say is is subset going to work? Let's see. E, B, the is subset of 0, 6, 9, right? Like this. It is. E and B are in there. 1, Yeah, okay, so there's exactly one where it's not a subset. So, if length of code equals six and a letter, letter map, uh, what are you saying? To C and F, so letter map C is subset of the code. So this is actually just going to be six, right? That pattern is six. So we can actually do a digit map on that one. We can do digit map six. This is too long of a list comprehension, so I'm going to break it down into a for loop. So for code in self.sample, length of code 6, and letter map C is subset of code.
then uh, digit map six is going to be equal to uh, the set of the code. So that's going to find your six. And uh, we need to figure out which of the letters was C and which one was F. So that's going to be for the to, to reduce the letter map, right? So now what we're going to say is we have the set of the code. So we say, well, which, which of the two digits in letter map C is missing from... Uh, so for character in letter map C, we'll say candidates equals letter map C, just to well to be clear, these are going to be the uh, CF candidates. Oops. For a character in the CF candidates, if character is in digit map six, then the missing letter maps to Z, the present letter maps to F. So that means letter map F is going to be equal to just the character, right? And if it's not in there, then letter map C. going to be in the character. Okay. So that's going to sort out um, Oops, something's wrong. Key error 6. We got a problem. Digit map doesn't have a 6. Why doesn't digit map have a six yet? It should have been set up in here. Oh, does this have to pop out? That's why that has to pop out. So for each code, for each sample, right? There we go. Uh, for each code in the sample, if the length of the code is 6 and the candidates are in it, then of the three patterns, two will contain the letters mapping to C and F. One will only contain one of those letters. Ah. See if can is not a subset. We want is not a subset. not. So the length of the code is 6 and it's not a subset, then that's the 6. Then for each character in the candidates, if it's in there, yeah. Um, what's going on here? This doesn't look right. The L F and C should be set, and they're not. Oh, it's because I have too many equal signs. That's why. 
Let's try again. F and C are now set. So we now know A, C, and F have been disambiguated. Terrific. Um, and we have candidates for 147. Oh, right. One is B E. Right. Four is G B E C. Seven is D B E. Eight is B D F C G. Right. And six is D F C G. D F C G A E. Right. So we just need to get two, three, uh, two, three, five, nine. Two, three, five, and nine. Okay. So we're getting there. We're working our way down. So that finds the six. Of the three patterns, candy six letters, two will contain letters mapping to B and D, but one will only contain one of those letters. That pattern is zero. The missing letter maps to D. The present letter maps to B. So we're basically going to repeat this whole thing and parameterize it up here. Uh, okay, so we need to parameterize this. So we'll say the, the candidates, right? So you don't need that. And then There we go, self, except this one's got two selfs now. Okay. So we got our candidates, our code in self.sample, right, for character and candidates. If the character is in digit map six, self.letter map C equals. So you need the candidates, uh, the digit that we're finding right, which is going to be six. The digit we're finding the candidates um, the correct letter Oh, the present letter and the missing letter. The present char and the missing char. Okay. So now we can just call that a few times. So the digit is six. The candidates is going to be letter map C. No, the mapping to C and F, but one will only contain one of those letters. Yep. The candidates is C. The present char and the missing char. Present letter maps to F, and the missing letter maps to C. Actually, the the missing char is can always be the the letter map. So we just need to, uh, or it could be either, it could be either one, actually.
So don't need candidates. We could do candidates equal to letter map present child. There we go. Okay, and now we should be able to do the same thing. Disambiguate the of the three patterns containing six letters. Oh, there was a six that wasn't supposed to be the le this one. That's that should be there. Uh, okay. Oh, wait a second. Otherwise, uh, that pattern is six. Okay, so that, and then zero, and then nine. I just got confused because it, the length was six letters, and we were also disambiguating the six in our first example. Good thing I caught that one. That would have been hard. So now we're disambiguating the zero between the missing, le the present letter maps to B and the missing letter maps to D. And then we're disambiguating the nine and the present letter maps to G, and the missing letter maps to E. Okay, cool. Attribute RX, object has no attribute digit map. Oh, because we're still decoding. We don't have the digit map yet. Um, you need our like temporary digit map here. So it's like a digit map in progress. Because uh, the, the actual self digit map won't be done until decode is done. In fact, the letter map needs to go up there. Okay, so... Actually, we can just do this because these, right? We call decode, and that's going to create the. Um, we can just start out like that. Okay. Digit map is not defined. Oh, it's because it doesn't have a self on it. Oh. Well, now we've got we got some that have self and some that don't. Let's remove the ones that have self. Actually, we can do this. Uh, this is not not a good. Uh, I'm sure there's a better way to search and replace this, but digit map, digit map. There we go. All right, we've got all our letters mapped. A, A is D, nothing else is D, yep. B is G, C is B, D is C, E is A, F is E, G is F. And we just need to get our remaining digits. We've got one, four, seven, eight, six, zero, and nine. We just need two, three, and five, the, the weird ones. Just need two, three, and five. Cool. So of the three remaining digits, two is the one that contains whatever maps to E. Okay, so these are, the remaining digits are one, two, three, four, five. The ones of length five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So of the ones with length five, the one that contains whatever maps to E is two. So actually, we should call this uh, disambiguate um, sixes. Len, so disambiguate six len. And then we'll do disambiguate five len. So 
So there's which digit are we disambiguating and the char we're looking for. Okay. So, uh, same thing. The candidates is going to be equal to self dot letter map the character. Right? Um, if the length of the code is five and candidates is in there of the three remaining digits two is the only one that contains whatever maps to e then self dot digit map for the digit is going to be equal to the set of the code and the letter map oh the letter map is done the letter map is already done at this point right we're just doing digit mapping okay Disambiguate 5 len. So to disambiguate the 2, we need the E. And to disambiguate the 5, we need the B. Okay, and then whatever's left is going to be the 3. Uh, I guess I, I knew. <laughs> Uh, it was good thinking of me to say that earlier, but now implementing that. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Is there something else between two, three, and five? It's the only one with B. It's the only one with E. So three is like a like a special. Uh. It's the last one, right? So I guess five len isn't accurate. It'll be a disambiguate two five. Uh, we can actually do the cert digit in two five. The six length ones are gonna be six zero and nine. Just a safety mechanism here. Okay. Disambiguous. All right, we got to disambiguate the three. Let's just do that on its own. Four. Let's try to just code it here. Oh, come on. Key error X. What's happening here? FBADC is going to be two, right? Oh, because it's an equals equals. I keep messing that up. Why am I doing that so much? There we go. 
Whew. So here's our digit map. One, four, seven, eight, six, oh, two, five. We just need the three. And here's our letter map. Cool. A is D, B is G, C is B, D is C, E is A, F is E, G is F, okay? You know, we can actually use the letter map to create three here. Um, and that actually might be the easiest thing to do. So if we look here, three is A, C, D, F, G, right? Which means... Digit map three is going to be equal to the union of letter map A C D F G A C D F All right, just get the three like that. Just build it up. All right, once you know the letter map, you know everything. In fact, we could have done that for two and five also, uh, because we know we know all the letters after we do the disambiguation. We don't need to do this two five disambiguation. Um, we could have done two and five this way. That's okay. We'll do both ways just to to illustrate both ways. C come on. Oh, dict has no attribute union. That's why. Three. It's D-F-B-E-C, and five is D-F-G-E-C, and I think that looks correct because... Uh, there should only be one difference between 3 and 5, which is that the B gets flipped over. The B becomes, right? And if we look at the letter map, the B is the G. and the So B is in 5, and in 3, it's not there. So that's correct. Okay. So we correctly have our letter map and our digit map. Um, great. So the thing is, all this is really accomplished is we have this object, which is a decoder, right? But now we need to make more functions to actually answer questions about the display now that we have the letter map and the digit map created. So, finally answering part one, the question being asked is, in the output values, how many times do digits 1, 4, 7, or 8 appear? So you're going to go through the, um, the display. Right, so we're going to make a public facing function called count digits. So the digits is going to be a list in this case of like one, four, seven, and eight, right? Digit in digits. So we're going to look up in our digit map, that digit, right? Uh, for each digit, 
look up in the digit map what that string for that digit is and say, uh, oh, and then we're going to say for um, display digit in display, well, for each display, if the digit map is equal to the display digit, counter plus equals one, return counter. And actually, this if is the thing that needs work. Oh, we forgot this self here. Oops, we forgot we took, oh, we're not calling count digit. We got to actually do something down in our, uh, down here. <laughs> okay, so we've got all our decoders, right? So what's our part one result? So our part one result is decoder dot count digits, decoder dot count digits one, four, seven, eight. So the part one result is equal to the sum of, well, no, the sum goes out here. Decoder dot count digits one, four, seven, eight for decoder in decoders. Okay. Method object is not subscriptable. Sum decoder dot count. Oh. Got some parentheses. Okay. Let's do some testing right here. Self dot digit map uh, digit. The digit is the one. All right, because that, right, that makes sense. And then the display digit is. Uh, no, 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 no. So we actually want to say, uh, what if we do the set of the display digit? Yeah. So then we can, so we, we can put it, just put a set around this. Say, okay, is this set? Because now the ordering of the string and all that stuff doesn't matter once we do everything with sets. Um, so if the digit map is equal to the set of the display digit, add to the counter. Okay. Now we're using, let's use test input one. And it should say, in the above example, there are 26 instances. So that's test input two is going to be a 26. Test input two should give us a 26. Oh, we got our breakpoint still on there. Sure enough, we got a 26 with test input two. I'm feeling good, and I'm feeling like part two is going to go down easy because we've done all this work of parsing every single digit. So, uh, yeah, let's change this to input.txt, and we're going to have the right answer. I'm, I'm wagering. 514. That's the right answer. Are we going to finish part two very quickly thanks to the code we've written? Let's see. You should be able to determine the remaining digits. I did. Consider again the first example above. To care about mapping between slurry only makes sense the following configuration. So the unique signal patterns. Yep, we got that. The four digits of the output value can be decoded. Yep, we got that. The output value for this entry is 5353. Yep. Following the same process for each entry, the output value of each entry can be determined. Yep, we can do that. 
adding all the output values in the larger example reduces 61229. For each entry, determine all of the wire segment connections and decode the four digit output values. Add them all up. This will not be hard because we did the work. So this is counting digits. Let's get the get the actual uh get the actual number. Get the whole number. So so to do this is going to be very simple. Uh we're going to say uh the number is this list, right? And we're going to say uh, four digit in digits. Number append uh, self dot digit map digit. Oh no, four digit in uh, display digit in self dot display. Set. Uh, hold on. <laughs> oh, this is what we need to reverse our. Do we need to reverse our mapping? I think this might be where we need to reverse our mapping, like we discussed before. Um, let's just do this. Oh, wait, we forgot an important part. And that important part is Oh, so part two result is going to be the sum of decoder dot get whole number for decoder in decoders. There we go. Uh, get out of the way. Oh, okay. It got out of the way. Thank you. Uh, go over here. Okay. So, uh, display. So the display is these strings. Yeah. So we need to flip the digit map. Um, so let's flip the digit map at the end of the decode, right? And we'll call it the, the lookup map. Uh, let's just Google, like, maybe there's a really easy way to flip a Python dictionary. Python flip dictionary. Reverse inverted dictionary. Yeah, VK equals KV in uh, dot items. That makes sense. KV. VK. Oh. VK. Let's look at that again. <laughs> V colon K for K comma V. In. Okay, that makes the lookup. Now that we have the lookup, right? Um, what we can do is we can say uh, self dot display. So for display digit and self dot display, uh, 
the number to append, right, is going to be the self.lookup. We're going to look up the set of self uh, of the display digit. And now, oh, what do you mean set? Unhashable type. Oh, we need a frozen set to make it as a a, a, a um right Python frozen set. It's just frozen set. That's it. Okay. VK, a, fro a frozen set. There you go. Unhashable type set. Ah, we need a frozen set again. There we go. And now here we are. We can say our number is 8417, number.join. Join number? No. Uh, how do we turn a list of list of ints into an actual number? <laughs> uh, let's Google that. Python turn list of uh, digits into number. Is that to become a string again? String integer for integer. Yeah, this is what I was trying to do is this one. Convert list of integers into a single integer. One, two, three, one, yep. Yeah, string i for, uh, and then int. Yeah, that's what I was trying, that's what I was, my approach. So I guess there isn't a better way to do it. So it's going to be uh, string x for x in number. And then we're going to join. And then we're going to do an int. Yep. Return int join string x for x in number. Great. And that's going to get the whole number. Okay, and so it said here for uh, for input two. Oh, part two should be five three five three for input one dot text should be five three five three. for test input one dot text. Should be five, three, five, three. It's five, three, five, three. Why is part one broken now? What, how do we break part one? What happened? Get out of that. I want to disable that box like forever. Oh, I see what happened is we. Part two result. What's up? Why is the part two result? What? All right, hold on. Let's. Let's run part one. Part one is still working. Good. So get out of here. All right, part two. Oh, well, we should actually go back to part one. Sum of decoder dot count digits. Sum of decoder to count digits one four seven eight for decoder in decoders. Okay, so that's right. Part 
part one result, part two result, sum of decoder dot count whole number for decoder and decoders. Okay. So that says 514, good. And this one says, why is it, why did I, how did I break part one? I need a diff between part one and part two. So we had a diff in, in here. I guess I'll do it down here. Part one, uh, oh eight, diff, one, two, Self.lookup is added. Get whole number is added. Oh, test input one dot text uh, is why. Because test input one dot text might not contain. Test input one decodes to, well, the second input, it took 26, but what does this decode to? Does it not contain any ones, fours? I guess it doesn't contain ones, fours, sevens, and eights. Anyway, let's move on to test input two, which should do 61229. Six one two two nine, and now we got the right answer for part two. I'm very sure of it. One oh one two two seven two. One oh one oh one two two seven seven two. Come here, you. That's the right answer. We're done with day eight. Goodbye.